give everyone a little, you know, five minute. Who is Lance McDaniel and how do we get to here? Um, well, great. Well, so I. Is five minutes uh, enough? So, <laughs> no, I can do it in two sentences. I'm from Alva. Um, so I grew up in Alva, which is in the northwest part of the state, which you uh-huh. know, obviously, and um, and was there until, until I was 13. And, uh, and I. I, I feel like the movie I just made is kind of a direct reflection of the fact that I was um, raised exposed to the arts, exposed to different cultures, and given not only appreciation of different people, but an understanding that we're all the same and that we yeah. all, you know. And so um, I believe I learned a lot of that in Alpha. And so for me, my my growing up there was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. And there was an Alpha Boys Choir um, led um led by a guy named Fred Newman, where all the, like, I think it was like third through sixth graders got to go, and you traveled all over southern um, Kansas, and you went to rest homes and churches and sang. Yeah. And it's amazing how many Alva people have really great jobs here in the city, and uh, and they're not all singers. I mean, there's judges and lawyers and, and corporate people and, and a lot of doctors. And I think the confidence you gain Mm-hmm. as a kid by going and singing with a group of people and, and in front of all these people you don't know. I just have to believe that mattered. And so um, so growing up in Alva was probably one of the most formative things that happened to me. We then moved down to Oklahoma City and I went to Edmond and then went to high school at Purcell and graduated from Heritage Hall. And so I did a kind of the sampler platter of Oklahoma yeah. education, you get to see all uh, of public and private. And, um, and all of those were great. And I think I really benefited from the fact that I had awesome teachers at every single school I went to and um, that really cared about me as a person. Um, and then um, for, Cal- for college, I went to Stanford. And I would say that's another place where my mind was kind of blown blown apart and then pieced back together. And, um, and it took those ideas that I learned in Alva to a new level, which is, okay, you're like, what is going on with race in America? And I was in school when Rodney King mm-hmm. um, incident happened, and so when he got beat. And um, and so I feel like that was kind of the second place where my mind was really kind of blown yeah. and, um, and expanded. And then um, I was an internet consultant for about 12 years and built the first website for Levi's and Starbucks and Star Wars and a lot of those really fun ones. And um, and then at 34, decided I really wanted to be a director. And so I started over and I got a job as a free intern for Gray Fredrickson, mm-hmm. Oscar winner and um, fellow um, podcaster. Yeah. Um, and, um, and Gray gave me a job. And um, so I, I moved from New York. York to Los Angeles and um, worked on Cloud Nine, which was the first movie from his production company, Graymark, which he started with John Simonelli um, and Mark Stansberry. And um, and then I worked on Million Dollar Baby mm-hmm. with, with Gray's friend, Albert S. Reddy. And, um, and that was totally awesome. And then Gray said, will you move back home? Because I'm going to do a series of low-budget scary movies. And so I moved home to work on Gray Mark movies. And I've been home 15 years. Um, and I've worked on independent film the entire time. Um, but I took a 10-year, not break, but 10 years, I worked at Dead Center. So as you mm-hmm. know, so I ran yeah. the Dead Center Film Festival. And what I find, um, what I love so much about Dead Center is um, it it made me feel more at home than any place in the city when I moved home. So when I came mm-hmm. back in 2005, Oklahoma City was very different. We didn't have the park or the river. You know, I mean, there yeah, were a lot of things yeah. that were still just, no just coming. Um, and um, and Dead Center was one of those bright, shining spots that was, here's a hundred different stories from around the world. Mm-hmm. So it didn't matter kind of what your opinion was. There was going to be some stuff that you loved and stuff that you did not like. And yeah. then you would go to these parties and debate with people why you didn't like her. And it was just so exciting and engaging. And it really was the first time I had actively sought out festivals as fun because I'd been to other festivals, but um, in other cities. But it was, um, and so um, I volunteered for Melissa Scaramucci for seven years, uh, or for five years rather, um, in um, programming. And so I would watch mm-hmm. almost every movie that would come in for several years, and um, and that was such a great education because I was new at filmmaking. Yeah. And so to be able to watch hundreds of movies a year that were short films and features and everything really kind of helped shape the kind of stuff I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And so. Um, um, and so then when I was at Dead Center, and they grew Dead Center into a super cool, nationally recognized event yeah. before me, you know, and so I think it's so I think it's important for people to know that what Khaki and Melissa did with the, the festival that Jason Justin Floyd founded was they turn it into something super solid so that when I came on in year 10, I had this existing entity mm-hmm. that I could then package and market differently, yeah. you know, and so it wasn't 
I didn't invent the wheel. What I did was figure out a way to package that wheel and sell it and um, and create education programs that would allow us to expand across the state mm-hmm. and um, you know and start training and doing more rural film classes and stuff like that. So um, I, I'm very proud of the 10 years I was at Dead Center, yeah. and I think we accomplished a lot and we grew a ton, but I think that that is a direct result of how awesome the people before me were, creating something that was so interesting mm-hmm. and, and possible to sell. Um, and then I stepped down in July and my after 10 years and part of it was I'd been there 10 years the organization is 20 yeah. and I thought well that's a pretty clean mm-hmm. clean break cut, like yeah. what am I am I, I going to run it for 20 years or 30 mm-hmm. like is this how I'm dying you know and so yeah. I kind of felt like Alex Picard Davis should not have to be 50 to run this thing you know she's smart enough she's super capable she's mm-hmm. awesome and so um, and so she and I talked about it for about a year and a half so she knew first that's good and um, and I'm like but if you want this job then let's figure out what you know what you need to do so the board because you work for the board of directors right. you know what once I'm gone, you work for them. You don't work for me. And she got very active in National Film Festival Alliance and um, and is now the vice president of the board there. And that has been such a blessing for Dead Center, and especially when COVID hit. Because when, right. when, when theater shut down, she was immediately on a call every other day with other festivals from Seattle to Sundance to whoever else saying, what are the technologies? How do we get this going? And so we were one of the first people to fully use Eventive mm-hmm. um, just because of our timing in June. And so a lot of the, a lot of the success we had with our, with our 20th anniversary was because Alex was involved nationally, is technical. So I felt like it was a great time to leave. I think the virtual festival was a wild success and yeah. super interesting. And then um, and two weeks later, I got a call about um, the fact that Race Dance's Hip Hop Nutcracker, um, which is a dance show that's mm-hmm. performed at OCCC and used to be at McGinnis, um, is not going to be able to, to happen because they go into Oklahoma City Public Schools and teach dance and then that's who makes up the dance show. Well, they yeah. couldn't do it because of COVID. And so he Chop, who's the founder, said, will you help me make a movie? And I'm like, you betcha, because yeah. I'm obsessed with this thing. Yeah. And then separately, a guy named Heath Hayes, who works for the Department of Mental Health here in Oklahoma, said, Lance, there is um, there is some some funding that we that people are we're trying to get we're trying to figure out ways to decrease the stigma around mental health and addiction. Yeah. And I and I had done a movie in Alva called The Homecoming Trilogy about a woman who gets out of prison and dies because of her addiction. Mm-hmm. And it was all told through dance and it's not a very happy movie, but poignant. Yeah. And um, and he saw it and he was like, Would you consider telling a different story, which is that what if that woman got the resources she needed? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well great. So what we came up with is Finding Carlos, which is um, based on Race Dance Company's Hip Hop Nutcracker, and instead of Clara, it's Carlos, who meets his father for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that's what their dance show is about. And so we took that and expanded it to, and their Carlos was about, you know, six or seven years old. We made ours a teenager who's struggling with anxiety and whose parents are addicts, one recovered, and um, and it's him trying to kind of find his way in the world against the backdrop that the father is his world-renowned choreographer, and so there's 11 dance numbers all based on Nutcracker songs. And, um, um, it's awesome. Like, yeah. I, like it's a, for me, it's the best movie. It's the most fun I've had making a movie. I think it's the best movie I've made. And the spirit of a bunch of people coming together during the pandemic to make some to make something to make yeah. art about helping others allowed a really good spirit throughout it. Yeah. And so yeah. So yeah. Was that five, <laughs> eight. Uh, so we did. That was good.